So you're telling me that you can't honor my coupon? It's only expired by one day. Well, I want to talk to a manager. Oh, you are the manager. That's what I think of you, manager. Oh, and look who it is. The cashier that got me into this. Take that, cashier. Oh, look who's standing back here. I seen you eyeing me down. You got a problem? You got a problem? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. Oh. I better get to the shop. You're probably wondering where I'm at. Hey there, Kerwin. How's it going, buddy? Oh, Ed, what do you want? I was just sitting around the house uh, wondering what you guys are up to. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm going up to the shop. Oh, great. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's go. Oh, well... I guess you can just tag along. Oh, what a day. Little old timey man, Kerwin. <laughs> Ed, what are you doing? It's 11.30 in the morning. Oh, you gotta learn to live a little, Kerwin. <laughs> oh, come on, Ed. You can't be doing that. That's illegal. Ooh. Out you go! Ed, what are you doing? You hit that guy. Ah, ah, ah. Well, he's a cyclist. He's in shape. Help you out. He's, he's not moving back there, buddy. You just keep on driving, Kerwin. We'll be all right. Just keep your mouth shut and your tail low. I don't know, Ed. I just think you should lay off that stuff. We don't need that to be happening to you, all right, Ed? Oh, no. Oh, what was that? Well, come on, man. See me running here? I'm trying to make a state. Go, Colin, drive. Ooh, now this day is getting interesting. What, Ed? Another bottle? Are you serious? Oh, we got a problem here. The only problem is after I finish this bottle, we're gonna have to go back to the liquor store and get more booze slips. I don't think so, Ed. That's not gonna happen. Uh, has he got a bathroom here, Kerwin? Uh, honey, I'm home! Calm down there, Ed. Oh, hey, slippers. No surprise seeing you here. What'd you bring Ed here for? Oh, he uh, invited himself, and I don't really want to talk about it. Hey, Tal, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a, a bathroom by chance, would you? Yeah, the bathroom's right there. You don't look too good. <laughs> uh -huh. What's the matter with him? Yeah, looks like he came down with a little of the old green apple quick step. Hey, Ed! <laughs> You better not be quick stepping all over the inside of my bathroom or you're gonna be cleaning it up. Pterodactyl hair. You see what that knucklehead Ed did in my bathroom? Got all sick in there. Ooh, what a disgusting mess. And then that slippers bringing him in here. I ain't cleaning up that mess. I'm gonna make Junior do it. Okay, today we're gonna focus on this single cylinder overhead valve Crawler engine. I'm going to show you how to rebuild the carb trader on this Kohler and I'm going to show you all the different carb kits and what carb kit to get which is the best one Because these carb traders leak a lot and you got to replace that seat the needle and seat So the first thing we're going to do is take the carb trader off and take it over to the vent So I'm going to show you how to take carb trader off, okay? All right, first thing let's take off the the cover so we can look at the air filter in case you need to replace that this one don't look too bad looks pretty clean next take off these two bolts here they're 10 millimeter Ding, 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 ding. I'm gonna cut this little zip tie off here. 
that's got the anti-backfire valve or fuel shut solenoid valve. Pull that wire off. Take this wire off. There's a little star washer. Helps get good ground. And another washer just fell off. You might want to check this breather hose. See if it's got cracks in it. Yeah, this one's pretty dirty under here. Alright. This crawler engine's got a fuel pump on it. And the reason I know is because it's got this metal tube going to it. So if you look on the other side, Mr. Cameraman, you'll see where the fuel pump is. Because there's two different carburetor kits. There's a carburetor kit for the fuel pump, and there's a carburetor kit if the gas tank is gravity fed. This gas tank's under the seat, so it's got to have a fuel pump. If the if it was gravity fed, the carburetor, uh, the gas tank would be up here, so the gravity would feed the fuel to the carburetor. Remove these clamps. It's all dirty and nasty under here. Now you want to be careful because this choke shaft is plastic. You don't want to break that as you're pulling this off. So be careful because I don't think you can buy just that choke shaft. This fuel line's old, so I'm just going to probably cut it off and put a new piece on. Yep. Now on here is a little plastic retainer. Flip it up and it unsnaps and you can get that off. Now don't lose it, it just fits in there. It fits behind the governor arm. See? That's what it locks in. See, it goes behind that rod. It slips on there, and then that snaps over it like that. So you don't want to lose that. Now, we should be able to pull this off, and then we could snake out the choke rod. See how that is? You want to be careful. See if it's in like that. Because this is plastic and you don't want to break that manhandling it, getting all manly on it. And see there's a plastic bushing in here too that this fits in. It's pretty locked in there. There, there it comes out. See? Alright, carburetor's off. I'm going to clean it up a little bit before I take it apart. And then uh, we'll take it apart and uh, I'll show you how to put that needle and seat in there. Alright, this is the most popular carburetor kit, but it doesn't come with a seat. It comes with a needle and the replaceable seat, which I hardly see any of. It's got the little rubber tip for the anti-backfire valve or gas shutoff valve. It comes with another rubber tipped or Viton tipped needle and a bowl gasket and a nut gasket and then the two gas the two manifold gaskets the one that goes here the one that goes here and this kits about ten twelve dollars but you need to see because a lot of times you'll put this kit in you'll put that new Viton tipped needle in it and the carburetor will still leak I've had that happen many times could not get it to quit leaking. So then they came up with this kit. This is the part number for the kit for the Courage. That's gravity fed. That's the part number. So if you don't have a fuel pump and you have a Kohler Courage engine, this is the kit. Now the one with the fuel pump is 20. 521-02-S. I don't have one here with the fuel pump, but it's 02. Here's the one for the command, gravity fed. See, CMD, that stands for command. And then here's the one for the command, pressure, that's the one with the fuel pump. So I'm gonna show you what you get in this kit. 
because this is the one we're going to use. You get this tool, you get this screw that you're supposed to use as a tool, you get a set of instructions that tell you how to use it, and look what you get. You get this kit. See? Same part number. Plus, you get a bowl nut, which is nice, in case you want to eliminate this shutoff valve, this, this anti-backfire valve, you can just put that nut in there. And then here's the seat. And there's a big price difference from this, $13 say, and all you're getting are these four other items and you're paying about $20 more. This kit's about $30 plus. All right, here's the instructions that tell you how to do everything in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to read this whole thing line by line. This video is going to be about 20 minutes long. No, we're not going to do that. I already read it once. Half inch wrench. Take this off. There you go. There's that little rubber tip, which is in the kit. You can replace this. Or you can just eliminate this and use the nut. Here's the bowl. Take the bowl off. Oh, look. Look at there. Boogers. Water. See the water in there? You can see the little drop of water way down in the bottom. Oh, look. Look what else is in there. There's a fish in there. There's a little guppy. No, there ain't no fish. Take the bowl gasket off. Get the pin out. There's the pin. Fell out. And there's the needle. That's the one with the Viton tip. I don't know what Viton is. Some kind of rubber. And there's the seat. Now, what they tell you to do in the instructions is to use this screw and screw that in and then you put this in a vise once you get that screwed in then you clamp the head of the screw in the vise and you wiggle on it and you pull that seat out that's pressed in there that's just ridiculous that stupidest thing i'd ever heard of i made my own tool right here 1024 self tapper and i found me a little spacer and a nut So what you're going to do is, I'm going to get a razor blade, that's what I'm going to do, is you're going to want a spacer that's going to fit over the seat. So you put this over that, and then this self-tapper will make its own threads. We're going to thread it in there. And then we're going to tighten that nut, and what that's going to do is it's going to jack that seat right out of there. Ain't that nifty? You can make your own tool. Kohler, you paying attention here? You should be putting this tool in here that Terrell makes. All right, I went ahead and threaded that in already to save a little time. Now, I made the same tool for the uh, Briggs carbon trader. So if you watch my Briggs needle and seat leaky carburetor, uh, video you'll see where I made the same tool but I had to use a different sleeve it's in here here's the sleeve that I use for the the Briggs one see I got all kind of tools in there that I made homemade tools in that little tape case yeah don't make this tool Kohler and then they'll put it in their kit and then I'll have to sue them Stealing my idea because I got it on film. It's on film right now. Isn't this easier than doing it the way they tell you? Oh, look, pulled it right out. Look it, look it. Booger Central, that was underneath the seat. That just came out in my hands. Look at that little booger on the end there. Look at it, pulling it right out of there. Yeah, that didn't make it leak too. See? Isn't that nifty?
Now, blow all this out, clean it out real good, blow it all out. Get all them boogers out, see, nice and clean now. Get the seat, stick it in here. Now I hope, I hope Crawler's watching this video because they tell you in them instructions because I did read them. This is how they tell you to install this. This is the little block for putting that back in. What they tell you to do is put the hinge pin in there and then take the block and put this in a vise and squeeze it until this contacts that. And you know what? Doesn't work. Paying attention crawler, doesn't work. Because what happens is if you do it like they tell you in the instructions, when you go to put the float on, the float ain't level, it's like this. So what you end up doing is taking the pin out, and taking the tool, and pushing it down even further until you get a level float level. So I'm gonna go do this over here on the vise and show you. All right, now if you read them instructions, they tell you in there to press this in in the arbor press. Like everybody's got an arbor press in their garage. Like everybody's got a factory and all this. They, they over technify everything in these instructions. They gotta think, okay, what would a person at their house have to do this repair? I'm gonna use a vise. Now I got jaw protectors on there because this is rough, but if you got a smooth vise, you don't need to. What you're gonna do is you're gonna turn that choke closed and then you're gonna set this in the vise because you don't wanna damage anything. And then look underneath to make sure that these aren't gonna hit anything when you go to snug this down. Now I'm gonna use their tool and I'm gonna do like they tell you in there with the hinge pin. And then I'm gonna tap it down to that. And you just use that block and a hammer and you can just tap it in there. You don't have to press it. It's not like it's some kind of high pressure it's got in there. Now hold that little block. Hit it too hard, you're gonna hit that pin and bend it. All right, I'm right even with the pin, and look, seat sticking up pretty much. Now I'm gonna put it together. I'm doing it just like the instructions tell me to, that their geniuses over there, Crawler, came up with. Oh yeah, look at that, that's a perfect float level. Not, so don't even, you gotta watch my video. Take those instructions they give you and take them in the bathroom and you know what to do with them. Use it as toilet paper. So what you do is just tap it down a little bit and keep trying it because you don't want to go too far. Because you might lose your level still high. Probably gotta go flush. Why don't they just tell you that in the instructions? Just drive it in, go flush. I'm just gonna go flush with it. I'm gonna tighten this up a little more. There, that's good. Sticking up just a hair. We're gonna put that new gasket on anyway. Look at that float level. Level. You wanna push down on it a little bit so you can see if you got any flex. To make sure it ain't bottomed out. That's perfect. So it's sticking up just a hair above the carburetor. Now we'll go put the rest of it together and put it back on the lawnmower. Now here's the other needle and seat which I've never come across one where it takes that rubber seat and that. So you don't need that. I don't know if you want to save that or not. I don't. 
Here's the rubber tip for here, in case you want to replace that. Here's a freeze plug that goes there, or welch plug. I'm going to save that. Here's that screw. You might be able to use that for something. That's one of them self-drilling screws. You might want to hold on to that. That's the old needle. We don't need that. New bowl gasket. Put the float bowl in. Wipe them boogers out real quick. Woo! Woo! Wipe them boogers out. The new gasket for either the valve or the nut, I'm going to eliminate that because those things go out and create a problem. Like most people tell, tell me when I'm fixing their mower. I go, we can eliminate that. What's it do? I go, it's supposed to keep it from backfiring. It backfires anyway. I said, I don't want to leave it off. And then here's the gasket for here and the one for here, which we're going to use. Now, what I do, because a lot of times people will come into the shop and they'll have a, a carbon trader they took off and want us to rebuild it and I want to make sure it doesn't leak. So I made a test stand and I'm going to show you my test stand over there. So I made up my own test stand. I took an old gas tank and welded it to a piece of plate with a shutoff valve and a piece of hose. And then I put a couple different studs in this shelving unit to hold the carbon trader. And then we turn the gas on. And you go, oh, you see that hose was shaking. That gas was going in. So it's full of gas. And then we check it to see before we give the carburetor back to a customer. Because we don't want to rebuild the carburetor and then give it to it, just assume that it, it's fixed. And then he goes home, puts it on, comes back. This stupid thing's still leaking. You didn't fix nothing. So then we made up this little stand so we could double check, make sure it don't leak, and then uh, everybody's happy. On your mark, get set, go. All right, first thing, hook in the, the link for the choke, then slide it on to the studs. Now I already put that, that retainer, I don't know if you, can you see that, Mr. Cameraman? That little retainer. And then get it, slide that in that hole, and then snap it back on top. All right, all good there. See how I make it look easy? And then now we gotta get the fuel line on there. This one with the fuel pump's a little trickier. The gravity feed one, you just got a fuel line. This is a little tricky because everything's so close. All right. And then you can put your clamps back on. I don't know, you don't even need them. These hoses fit so tight. All right. And then slide, oh, gasket. Gotta put the gasket on. Got the gasket. Now, if you eliminated that shutoff valve on the bottom, you don't need to hook that ground wire up. I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, a little star washer, a little starfish washer, and then this side had a metal washer. And your two nuts. 10 millimeter socket. Crank them down. Crank, crank, crank. All right, I'm going as fast as I can. And stop. Since I eliminated that valve, I don't need this wire. So you can just put it out of the way. I'm just going to wrap it around this ground wire and then I'm just going to check to make sure my linkages are all working. I can see my choke. I'm getting full choke on this one. All right, we're ready. Start it up. See what happens. Wow!
trailer. I want these crawler commands. And there's dinner. Ed, time for you to go. Oh my God, what are you doing here? Oh, my, you made a mess. <laughs> time for you to go. All right, tell Kerwin I'll be out in a minute. Kerwin, Flipper's left already. Uh, he left a long time ago. <laughs> time for you to leave. <coughs> Start walking, Ed. <sighs> what do you want? Uh, sorry, Tara, about the little mess I made in there. So let me take care of you. Get out of here. <sighs> Thank you.